That is a 1974 advert for the Big Mac. The Economist Big Mac Index isn't quite that old, but not far off. In 1986, they launched it. And joining us in the studio to talk to us about how relevant it is today in this era of inflation is Robert Willock. He's the director for this region and general manager at the Economist Intelligence Union. Morning, Robert. Good morning, Richard. Right then, let's take a step back and remind ourselves, what is the Economist Big Mac Index? Why was it invented and what does it do? So the the Big Mac Index, uh, or Bergonomics as it's often called, was invented by the Economist, as you say, 36 years ago. And really it was designed to show the importance of purchasing power parity, PPP. Um, And that's the notion that in the long run, exchange rates should move towards a rate that will equalise the prices of an identical basket of goods or services in any two countries. So I suppose, basically, in principle, the value of a currency should reflect its power to buy things. And so this index was designed not as a formal economic tool, but as a light-hearted guide to whether currencies are at their correct level. Because things like purchasing power parity are quite dry economic subjects, but you call it a Big Mac index and suddenly everyone lights up. So if we look at the Big Mac index at the moment, and and I've pulled it up on the Economist website at the moment, it looks like the Swiss franc is the most overvalued currency in the world at the moment, according to your index. It's 30% overvalued, followed by the country I'm going to this weekend, Norway. Uh, The krona is overvalued by 21.6%. What does that mean? And then the the Swedish krona, where I'm also going next week. That's not good news, (laughs) is it? So what what does that mean in simple terms? It means you've chosen two of the five countries that are overvalued compared to the dollar, which means that you will have a relatively expensive holiday. Um, In fact, actually, there are 53 currencies against which we compare the dollar in the Big Mac index, and only five of them at the moment are showing as overvalued. The vast majority are undervalued, and some to quite a significant degree. This means, in terms of the Big Mac index, this means ultimately that if you buy a Big Mac in any of the countries represented in the index, um, let's say, for example, you buy a Big Mac in Egypt. In dollar terms, um, you can buy a Big Mac in Egypt for about half the price that you would buy it in the US. Because it's $5.15 in the United States at the moment, a Big Mac. But in dollar terms in Egypt, a Big Mac is going to cost you about about $2.60, something like that. Yeah. So um, or even slightly less than that. So that would imply that the Egyptian pound is around 50% undervalued. Now, of course, you know, there are other variables at play here. It's, I mean, the, the nice thing about the Big Mac is that it's a completely standardised product. Wherever you are in the world, you know, I mean, you've just played the jingle. I remember it myself. To all beef patties, lettuce, sauce, special cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Or oh, something nailed like that. it. Well something, done, well, sir. Well, I think I got it slightly wrong. Um, <laughs> but, I, but I remember that. And, and, and it's the same wherever you go in the world. And I'm sure you and lots of your listeners have been to far-flung places in the world, looked at the array of food on display, particularly perhaps street food, and thought to yourself, hmm, I think it might be safer to go to McDonald's. Um, and, of course, the, the idea then is that because it's such a standardised product, uh, they are made identically wherever you are in the world. It's a great product to use to measure purchasing power parity. Now, of course, there are other variables. There are things like the cost of labour. There are things like the cost of property, and those things are likely to be variable. Um, and then it's also fair to say, I think, that in poorer countries, um, they often seem cheap relative to richer countries when you go there. Um, and and so perhaps the price of a burger in those countries is about what you might expect given the country's GDP per person. So to some extent, our index is adjusted for GDP, but not enormously. So it still provides, I think, a, an important guide to the actual purchasing power parity of the currencies in each of those countries. I'm looking at the Gulf countries, And obviously, our currencies are pegged to the US dollar. QA, slightly different, but that's fine. But UAE, Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, all undervalued in terms of the Big Mac index, particularly Bahrain, where it's 18% undervalued. Here in the UAE, it's a fairly small gap. It's about 5% undervalued. But that basically means that a Big Mac in Dubai costs about 5% less 
than a Big Mac in New York. Am yeah. I right? That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, we use McDonald's own prices for these things. So we are benchmarking against real live prices. And of course, where you are pegged to the dollar, you might expect prices of commodities, staples, products and services to be equivalent. But for example, here in Dubai, if we're saying that the dirham is 3.67 to the dollar, that doesn't mean that everything you buy in Dubai is 3.67 times more in dirhams than you would pay in dollars. There are lots of other factors involved. But it's, it's, if we were looking at Levi jeans or yeah. a Cadillac or a Tesla yeah. or something, we would have small fluctuations as well. You would. And of course, there'll be differences in local tax rates, for example. So VAT here is, is less perhaps than you would find elsewhere. Um, but you're right to point out that even in dollar pegged currency uh, environments such as the GCC, there are significant variations. So, as you said, the dirham is about 5% undervalued to the dollar in the Big Mac index. Saudi real is about 12% undervalued to the dollar. And then, of course, the nice thing about the index is you can compare any two countries. It's not just comparing against the dollar. So you would see, for example, then that the Saudi real is slightly undervalued compared to the dirham. And the nice thing about the index is it's complete open source software. You can go in, you can have a play, you can see how the currencies fare in the countries in which you're living. Imitation is the highest form of flattery. There's also a Starbucks latte index, <laughs> is there not? There are, there are others of these things. How, how do you guys at The Economist feel about that? Do you take it as a compliment or do you kind of mumble critically under your breath? Yeah, look, I, I, this was never invented as a serious economic tool, just something to make um, you know, exchange rate theory more digestible. But it has become a global standard. Um, you know, it is included in economic textbooks. It is used... Is it in yours, subject. Brandy Scott? You bought an economic <laughs> textbook last week, didn't you? Was it 500 pages? Was the Big Mac Index there, Chapter 5? Oh, I'm up to about page 9. <laughs> that has been a year. But it's an important issue, actually, and the, and the US Treasury does take this seriously. In fact, twice a year, it reports to Congress on countries that might be keeping their currencies artificially low. Um, artificially cheap to boost exports and steal a competitive edge. So, you know, this is something that is taken quite seriously by, by major economies around the world. Last question. I'm spotting an arbitrage opportunity. <laughs> I'm going to Oslo on Saturday, and the, 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 the krona is about 27% overvalued against the dirham, 21% against the dollar in terms of Big Macs, 27% against the dirham. Should I just take three suitcases full of Big Macs and sell them on the streets of Oslo? Yeah, um, I, I think that's a great idea, Richard. Why don't you do that and, uh, and let us know how that goes for you. <laughs> I'll give you a cut. <laughs> Robert, good to see you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us this morning. Dubai Eye 103.8. Join the conversation.